the hashtag race for Wanza donut dash 5k race was established in honor of Tawanza Sanders who died at Mother Emanuel Amy Church in 2015. Today I talk one on one with the co-organizer of this particular event Michelle Gray for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups and if you haven't already subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. Michelle Gray, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you for having me yet again, another year. <laughs> oh, I, I, I appreciate it greatly. In fact, I'm bringing you back on Quentin's Close Ups because obviously the hashtag Race for Wants a Donut Dash 5K is coming up very soon. And actually, it's an annual community event which established recently in, in the memory of Taiwan's of Sanders, as we all know, and its unforgivable legacy, that is. Obviously, you are the co organizer of this event. What's new? What's now? So last year, of course, I think when I interviewed with you last year, this was, it was right before COVID hit right, right. and we were so excited. And then, you know, COVID hit Charleston and they shut us down, um, which was literally like the week of our race. So with that, we had to kind of think of things a little different. And so one thing that we incorporated last year was we did like a virtual aspect and we like mailed all of our race packets and stuff to anybody who still wanted to participate. And so we still kept that aspect. Um, we are also a, like, if anybody wants to get their stuff mailed, they can get their stuff mailed and send us a video and the day of the race, it'll be, we'll have it on our Instagram or Facebook. So that was one thing that we were still able to incorporate from like last year but last year was you know our fifth year right. and so because this year is our sixth year we still have to make it just as big so we were super excited last year it was like we added new we got new people involved and all that so we're bringing all that back this year um and we're just excited that we're able to do this event in person and still be as safe as possible, but still, you know, see all of the people that have supported us for the last six years. And obviously, you know, you talk about new people. Who are the new people this year that are helping you with your event? Um, so we have the Blood Connection. We're, we're, we've partnered with them. They're doing a blood drive. And so you can schedule your appointment. All of the information is on our Facebook and our um, Instagram. You can schedule an appointment. You can donate. They will be there the entire um, time for the race. Um, I'm also looking at our Instagram to make sure I don't forget anybody, but we will have um, chiropractor. We will have bottleneck um, cafe out there. We will have jump castles. Um, just so many different aspects that, was like our huge thing last year. Um, so we're bringing that, that back. Like I said, we'll have um, the radio station out there broadcasting live, which is huge because we haven't had that before. Mm -hmm. So that's a different aspect. Um, you know, like I said, the jump castles, the kids loved it before. So we brought it back. Um, we'll have an artist out there that will be capturing like a live um, photo while we're out there. So just a couple of different aspects, just, a little more to get everybody involved to enjoy your time out there while you're either waiting for your people to come back or you're just volunteering and you just need a quick snack. So we're just really excited. I bet you are excited. And you, you touched on volunteers. How do you go about volunteering for your event? So uh, like I said, all of our information is always on our social media. Um, but if you want to volunteer, you can email my brother, Dominique Gray, at Dominique, D-O-M-I-N-I-Q-U-E at raceforachievement.org. And we will get you all signed up and ready to rock and roll for that day. We'll give you your tasks. We haven't assigned anybody a task yet, so you can still volunteer. And um, we'll get that list out. Um, we're actually going to work on that this weekend to just have everything organized. We're coming down to our last couple weeks, so that's when we like hit the ground running really hard and make sure... All of our I's are dotted and all of our T's are crossed. So, As a matter of fact, who is Michelle Gray's core organizer right now? So to be honest, I, you know, like my brother is like the spearhead really of it all. I just get to, you know, sometimes I get to take the credit um, when I have interviews. But, 
you know, this is really a group effort with, you know, our organization. We wrote my mom in a lot <laughs> and it's really just keeping things organized. And my brother plans a lot of it from out of state. Wow. So it's really keeping things organized, you know, whether it's, you know, ripping and running around town, getting deliveries. Um, our shirt should be coming in uh, in just a couple of days. So I'm excited about that. There's going to probably be even probably about 10 to 12 more boxes in my house. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited for that. Not excited for all the, right. the stuff we have. There's, I mean, there's like pockets of race stuff hidden in the corners of the house or just throughout the house. So um, we'll be getting our shirts in. So I'm really excited about that. And, you know, I really just help keep, keep everything organized here because all of everything we need for the race is here at my house. So it was going through making sure we had down to like our tape or pencils, like anything we need, like little stuff. It's like, let's get on top of it. Um, so that we're prepared for the 28th. And, you know, you told me in 2019, during your first appearance, appearance that is, for Quentin's close-ups, that the Donuts Dash 5K, hashtag race for Wanza, is not easy to plan because it takes a year to plan for the entire event. How hard has it been to replan this race after COVID for some of your plans last year and you have to actually go virtual? Um, so, you know, it made us think on our toes. And, you know, we had to, we had to get creative. Um, but because we have built such a success, successful event over these last few years, um, a lot of our people that were involved last year were ready for us to plan the race and get involved again this year. So that kind of took some of the burden off because everybody was ready. Like, hey, when are you guys doing it again? Let's get involved. Um, but it also gave us a little more time to, to get, you know, additional sponsors. So we have a lot new, a lot more new sponsors this year, which is so exciting. Um, and we just, like I said, we were able to get creative. Like we are still doing our virtual aspect. Um, and I mean, it still was because COVID is still dominating, um, the area we, are still trying to make sure we're as safe as possible and you know we're doing things within guidelines um it was still one of those things where we were waiting to see in order for us to pick the date we had to wait to see if um events of our size were going to be allowed mm. so it was still like a waiting game um for a while and we had a lot of people just hitting us up and like when is the date when is the date and it was like as soon as we're able to you know, be able to get those permits, then we will let you guys know. So it was, it was almost, it was the one thing that was different was the waiting game. Mm -hmm. um, typically we don't have to wait to pick a date. We kind of pick a date. We do it the same, you know, around the same time every year. And we were just like, what's going to happen? Are they going to allow us to have this event? And, you know, things worked out. And so we're able to have the event. What exactly will be the COVID protocols at your race? Um, so we are stacked with hand sanitizer masks. Um, we will have masks there for anybody who wants them if they don't have them. Um, and then we're going to social distance as much as possible. Um, like I said, we'll have hand sanitizer and, um, wipes and disinfectant and just be social distance as much as possible. Um, we are in quite a bit large area, so we're able to spread out. Um, and we're outside for the entire event, which um, is a benefit to to having our event. We're outside, so we're not compact in, into an indoor area. Absolutely. And let me take you to the event right across the way here in West Ashley at South Windermere Center. Who, what, when, where, and how is this going to happen? <laughs> so, like I said, South Windermere is a huge supporter. Um, we do it in the South Windermere Shopping Center. Um, kind of, there's another little shopping center right behind Earth Fair. Right. And we're kind of tucked away in that corner. Um, and the starting place is right there by, it's a cool school. So we start there. Um, and we take the Greenway to Krispy Kreme, which is our halfway point. If you're in our competition, there's a non-competition and a competitive part. If you're in our competition, you or your team, 
Um, you eat your 12 donuts and then you run back. <laughs> so that's, you choose. But even if you're not in a competition, you can have your donut. Um, if you are in that competition, you do have to eat all 12 donuts and then you have to run back. Um, and Krispy Kreme is a huge sponsor. They look forward to this event every year as well as we do. And so we're just excited. Absolutely. And, you know, you also told me this back in 2019 that, hey, listen, 2018 was your biggest year. As a co-organizer, what steps are you taking to make sure that this year's race is one of the biggest? Well, I think one thing that's different from the previous years is just making sure that everybody knows that um, they'll be safe at our event as much as possible. Um, but just, you know, we have some loyal supporters and they supported us through last year and through the craziness of 2020. And so they're back and ready to support us again in 2021. And we're just super excited about it. Um, I think it's just a huge blessing that shows, you know, just a huge blessing for us that, you know, we have so many supporters that are willing to support any way they can, whether it's, you know, us mailing their, them their packets and them doing their race at home or them being with us in person, but still being as safe, safe as possible. Absolutely. And obviously, as you mentioned, the race initiated five years ago. What's that biggest difference right now about the race? Um, it's crazy to think back that it's, you know, it's been almost six years since our first race. I right. do remember our first race. Um, I was able to run or walk. I walked okay. that first race. And um, the biggest difference is just to, to truly see how we've grown as an organization. Um, you know, we started with just like our close family and friends showing up wow. and now we've been able to get, um, like all of Charleston involved. Yes. And that's huge for us because we know that Wanza was, mm. he wanted Charleston, he wanted to put Charleston on the map. He wanted everybody to know who he was. And it's just, it's amazing that, you know, five, six years later, here we are continuing his legacy and like truly seeing how the city that we've grown up in has been able to support us. And I might be redundant in this question coming up, but obviously ABC News report, uh, 4 reported that the community supported a family-friendly run walk, which is held each year, as you know, in honor of the life and legacy of Tawanda Sanders, who died in 2015 after the shooting at Love Emanuel. What memory of Taiwan's a personal memory of yours that resembles this event? Truly, I just the gathering of people. Um, Wanza wanted any and everybody to come together and have a good time. And that's one thing that we're able to do at our event, whether it's, you know, eating some donuts, <laughs> running or, you know, like, like I said, we have the jump tassels for the kids and, yes. you know, just a bunch of different aspects thrown together. And we're still able to, to meet and network and that was something that Wanza was really big on and it's just really having a good time with family friends and meeting new people and he, like I said if you met him you would never forget him so at our events we want you to come and never forget us yes. so that's just just a little bit that we can do absolutely and the race is obviously put on by race for achievement incorporated with the support of the jewish uh, charleston jewish community center the run walk is a fundraiser for both organizations to continue their missions of strengthening the community and supporting diversity in, in the charleston community and as you know a portion of the funds raised will be also be donated to the taiwanza sanders scholarship fund which provides college scholarships for students in charleston county schools how does the donut run support diversity here in charleston i think one thing um that we've been able to do is, you know, truly bring, um, different, different people together. Um, we started with, you know, the partnership with the Jewish community center and, you know, now here we are six years later and we have all these sponsors from different areas yes. and different backgrounds of Charleston. And I think that shows, you know, that's our one way to help. You know, that shows like, hey, it doesn't matter who you are, where you come from, we can bring you guys together. Um, look at the people who support us. We will support this. You know, we're all from Charleston. Everybody in this organization is from Charleston. And we want to see Charleston, you know, become the greatest city that it can become. And I think just truly standing out and bringing 
so many different um, people together is just our one contribution. And obviously the youth is the feature of tomorrow. How are you engaging the youth today about diversity and fitness? So I think one thing we can do, you know, with our organization is, you know, not only do we do this race, we have mentoring programs here in Charleston as well as in Charlotte. And I think just having that conversation and truly under, you know, getting the youth to understand, um, getting the youth to understand what diversity is and what it's about, I think is just, is just a start. You have to start with the youth. They are the future of tomorrow. So if we start there, just giving them um, a safe space to talk in, I think that's where we start. And what is that conversation right now, Michelle? Um, so it's just, the conversation I think just starts with, and I think not only with children, but with young adults and even adults is truly understanding what diversity means. and you know, being able to really have that conversation and be open-minded and listen to any and everybody on their take on diversity is I think where we start. Um, You have to have that conversation. You have to be willing to have that conversation and not only have that conversation, but listen to others. You know, we all um, come from different areas, different backgrounds, different cultures. And I think starting that conversation and listening to others is is a great foot in the door. Um, But it does change. And, you know, we live in a world where not everybody sees it that way. But I think with the youth, if you just truly just sit down and listen to them and kind of give them the floor, I think that's, you know, like something that we can do. You'll learn a lot from the kids. They know, they know a lot more than uh, the social media and the TikTok. They know a lot more than I think we give them credit for. But I think if you give them the floor and you give them the opportunity to talk, they they pay attention to a lot of things that I think as adults we we don't give them credit for. If Taiwan was here, were here today, what exactly would he be listening to as far as diversity? I think Taiwan was a just if he were here today, um, he would be so involved. He was involved in the community. I think he would be over the top, especially over the last few years, just to see um, the political climate that we're in. Um, he would find any which way to get involved and get more, you know, get more of the conversation going. Um, so, gosh, if he was here, oh my gosh, I think the conversations would be, you know, even when he was alive, we would have deep conversations. And I think he was one of those people that we kind of needed in this world to kind of talk about any and everything with. Um, He had such, he was so vocal, but he was also one that would listen to any and everybody and learn from them. Wow. That's amazing. And obviously, as I mentioned earlier, you know, you all says that the portion of funds raised will also be donated to the Taiwan Sanders Scholarship Fund, which provide college scholarships for students in Charleston County schools. Which one of those scholarship winners actually describes Taiwan? Um, all of our scholarship winners are a piece of Taiwanza. Um, one of, you know, our questions is how do you relate to Taiwanza? And like, and when we go through these applicants, that's something that when you read these applicants and you read their questions, you read their answers to our questions, it'll, it'll resonate with us. Um, you know, over these last few years, each one of them they did, they pulled something out of us because they, they were able to, you know, win. And it's just a huge blessing to, to, to hear these young people, high school seniors, you know, talk about the, the impact that, you know, he's had on them because they were, you know, freshmen or they were, you know, still in middle school when this event happened. So to really, truly hear from them is amazing. And just to see how, you know, they were somewhat connected to him, even though they didn't know him. Wow. And let's, you know, obviously I'm a runner too, but for instance, if I want to run in this particular race, how should I go about that? Um, you can go to our website and register at raceforachievement.org or it's on Eventbrite. If you just search uh, Race for Wanza, you'll find us. Um, registration is still open. 
it does close the day before the race or the night before the race, but we are st- you can still register the day of. Wow. We do day of registration, and we always have a lot of people that show up day of, so it's always exciting. Um, so still come out. Um, if you can't register online, still come out because you can register in person. And um, as long as we have swag bags available, you'll still be able to get one. Oh, that's amazing. And obviously, a lot of people in Charleston knew, knew that Taiwanza was very creative. How creative will you get for next year's race? Well, we have to get real creative because our plan is um, typically we do our race in March. Yes. And it's August now. So <laughs> 2022, hopefully we'll get back to like regular schedule programming right. with March. So we're going to have to get real creative because, you know, March will be here before you know it. And then I'm sure in conversations with, you know, our organizers and, you know, when all of us get together, we'll come up with some different idea. And uh, we are always open to ideas and, you know, people reach out to us all the time. So we never know what the future holds. And I'm sure we will get even more creative next year. That, that's amazing. Well, Michelle Gray with obviously Race for Wanza. Thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. Likewise.